party wisely decided to go around the horse trees and into the untamed steps. Home sweet home. The party spent a lot of time walking and talking with the Raven Queen cultists until we were ambushed by goblins. We killed them. Camilla, who had a budding relationship with Daro, went down in the fight. Vazales healed her and she began to repay his help with obsession. Feeling spurned, Daro shifted forms into Dega, Camilla's recently deceased husband, in a strange attempt to win her back. After the goblins were dead, Throck took some armor off the hobgoblin leader, minus the chest plate. Uh, he didn't know how to use it, but he carried it anyway. Avan cut open the body of the hobgoblin and used its entrails to perform a ritual sacrifice and summon Vaughn, a new raven familiar. Daro continued impersonating Degas and once again got so into the character that he forgot his true identity. That wasn't weird for anyone at all. As the party continued to travel across the untamed steps, they began to understand why the place is called that, and why most normal people go around. First, there was a two-headed giant. Throck called it an Eden. It was fighting a T-Rex for some reason. That's what we call the Great Hunter. One of the kinds of thunder lizards, which is appropriate since Throck killed it by summoning lightning from inside its throat. The hit points were suspiciously low by that time. Black Mamba. It did kill Nori though. The Rock Kepper came. Then we immediately got attacked by a pterodactyl. Burn lizard. When those battles were over, the group continued traveling westward until an ominous building appeared on a hilltop to the south. It was the temple of the chain god where Raylan had grown up as a promised one and from which he fled after the murder of his mother. Raylan had never left the temple prior to escaping from it, so he didn't realize he was wandering back towards it. He was a little concerned. Before the party could heed Raylan's warning and flee, a massive, twisted corruption of an Ur-Man suddenly appeared before them and attacked. Eerie was killed, so Throck tried to kill the guys who killed her, but was eventually knocked unconscious by several of the large mutated Ur-Men. The battle was halted when the human members of the temple arrived and recognized Raylan. The party and the Raven Queen cultists were escorted inside the temple, and one of the large creatures carried Throck inside. Throck awoke, unarmed, in a dark room, under the temple and had a conversation with Baldi. A chained god cultist named Necron. Baldi. Baldi revealed that the mutant ermine were called Baroguras. Baroguras. Barracudas. And that he had created the Baroguras by experimenting on ermine. He also said that a predecessor of his had created the ermine by experimenting on humans, but they had proven too difficult to control. And meanwhile, Raylan was locked in his own bedroom by Haster, the high priest of the Jenga. Avin, Daro, and the Raven Queen cultists were locked up in a different room, on the other side of the temple. Until they snuck out, Daro put on the robes of a chain god cultist to kind of blend in. And Avin turned into a snake. Daro was caught easily, since all but four of the chain god cultists were away from the temple hunting for Raylan. But instead of doing anything to him, they allowed him to just hang out in Raylan's room. With the door locked and Bargu outside. Meanwhile, down in the dungeons, Throck had freed himself from his restraints, scared Baldi out of the room, and begun randomly drinking the potions he found there just as soon as he could. Necron had believed the restraints on the table would be enough for any Urman, but Throck's not just any Urman. In one of the potions, the one that smelled like bacon, made Throck bigger. Upstairs, Daro took on Raylan's form in order to allow the real Raylan, who was more familiar with the temple, to sneak out of his room and look for Throck. Downstairs, the enlarged Throck broke out of his cell and proceeded to defeat all the Varro Gurus in games of Rock Rock Rock. According to her law, whoever's rock is bigger wins. So, the Varro Gurus in the dungeon now recognize the rock as their chieftain. Upstairs, Raylan and Zelios found the altar of the chain god where they had been many times before. But this time, Raylan used his Memories of the Fallen ability on the demonic creature preserved in the stone floor, perceiving its final memory from life when it was murdered by humans amidst a chaotic hellscape. Reminding Zelios that the cult of the chain god killed their mother and convincing him that the cult would see him share the same fate as the demon on the floor. 
We haven't finally got Xavius to let go of his dream of being worshipped as a god. With their disparate wills finally coming into alignment, two boys combined into their true merged form. Zalim, the true promised one, half Raiden, half Xavius, all Akumra. Avan and Zalin eventually found a secret staircase leading down to Necron's dungeons, where Throck was rallying all the Barracudas to his side. Moral Gura. Barracudas. On a count of six. Seven. <laughs> two. Throck and the Borrow Guru scribe bark. Fourteen. Four. <laughs> Three. Pull their strength, eleven. <laughs> Zalin yells. <laughs> six. <laughs> you run for <laughs> break down the steel door guarding Necron's treasure room. There, they found a magical hammer that only Throck left, which echoed with the roar of an enraged beast when he touched it. They also found Necron's bedroom in study, which Zaylin raided for magical texts. Right then, the chained god cultist upstairs began performing a ritual. Party members began to have their sanity strained by inexplicable magic pulses. The party made their way to the temple sanctuary upstairs. The cult of the chain god was performing a ritual to help them defeat the party and draw Zaylin back to their side. The ritual involved the blood sacrifice of all the Raven Queen cultists who had troubled with us. Fortunately, all the borrowed gurus from the dungeons now followed Throck. Unfortunately, the ones from upstairs did not. Fortunately, only four human members of the cult remained to perform the ritual. Unfortunately, it was the four most powerful ones. Haster, the high priest, Gino, the school teacher, Necron, the wizard, and Freya, the betrothed of the promised one. The battle was intense. And emotional. Freya transformed into a huge skeletal creature, revealing to Zaylin for the first time that she had always been able to do so. But while his personality had been split, hers had not. Freya knocked Throck unconscious and nearly killed him. But at last, she was driven away. The other chained god cultists were killed, and the Raven Queen cultists were rescued. Zaylin used his memory of the Fallen ability on Haster, learning that he had asked Necron to magically split Zaylin's personality in two upon his birth in order to lessen his power. At last, the party left the Temple of the Chained God and found Eri's body at the bottom of the steps, where it had been left after her death. Zaylin reached down to try and recover her final memories as he had done with others, but something went wrong. Eri's soul was somehow transposed into Zaylin's mind. Just when I thought the voices were gone. Eri now lived again as a voice inside Zaylin's head. Making all of the Raven Queen followers including Avan uncomfortable due to the Queen's prohibition against undeath. Eri wanted out possibly even more than Zaylin wanted her gone. But we were stuck with each other. So we continued our journey westward to escort the cultists to their homeland of Lepi. And after that, to go Jotunheim and return the giants in the galaxy. But first they had to complete the treacherous journey across the untamed steppes. And this became problematic when the group was accosted by a pack of 200 ermen. These were not from Throck's tribe. They were still Grumsh worshippers, convinced by their shaman to hunt and kill Throck as a heretic for his new worship accord. And of course, Daro took on the persona of Kronk, another ermen traveling with Throck, in order to try and help Throck win over the crowd. That was never going to work. So we fought 200 ermen. Luckily for those ermen, Throck's might with the storms along with some well-chosen spells by his companion. Call lightning! Lightning bolt. Stabbing. Convinced the surviving majority that Kord was indeed the superior god. So nearly 200 male ermen now pledge themselves to Kord and recognize Throck as their chieftain. Throck sent them east to meet up with the Ur women and Ur children from his original tribe and merge with them under Granda's command. Then the party continued west. Zaylin and Eri decided to meditate on his internal demons while on watch on the steps one night. His distraction caused him to miss the approach of the ogre until it was almost on the group. Yeah, but it was just an ogre. 
Dara got a little caught up in his character again and forgot that he was not actually an Urman named Kronk. Kronk was very helpful. I wonder what happened to that guy. There was quite a bit more travel after that until the party found themselves outside a cave with the screams of dying men echoing out of it. We went in to investigate. Troll. The troll had captured some soldiers who had deserted from the army of Argus in the same battle that Brock was the only survivor of. Their attempt to cross the untamed steps without help from a native was ill-advised. Good thing Krunk was there to help. Also eight wolves, which Avin summoned for the first time. The resulting battle was intensely gory, but at the end of it, the few surviving soldiers joined the party and the cultists to travel the rest of the way to Lethia. All the Boro Gurus in games. Boro Gurus. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> then we immediately got attacked by a. Well, I'm sorry, how Pterodactyl. you say it? Pterodactyl. That's how you spell it? Yeah, yeah. it's a silent P. Wow. The borrowed gurus. Yeah, yep. Uh, this <laughs> is an A. <laughs> Barguru outside. Barguru? That, Don't listen to her. No, you were right. She, you, were, you said it right. You're the good child. In fact, never listen to her. B seven four W U. Borrowed guru. This was a very emotional moment. Yeah, I remember. For you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were all just like, oh, uh, like bone girls. <laughs> 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 still into her. Seriously. Well, it's first now, and then and then was bothered that we were trying to set him up with skeleton. I, what? Right. I what is it? Barrel gurus. Barracudas. Barrel gurus. Right. That's what. I, that's that's literally what I'm saying. Half man, half machine. <laughs> half man, half machine. All akunra. I'm gonna say all cop by accident. <laughs> Throck and the barrel gura. Barrel gura. Nope. On a, yeah. on a cat. That was the one time you got it right. Yeah. <laughs> Borrow Guru. Well, I, I still said Borrow Guru. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> no, that can't happen. Avon and Zalian. Zalian. Sure, sure, sure. Whatever the fuck. Uh, Names don't matter. Words don't. Words aren't important. I'm not the one in the hot seat. Bibbledy-boo. 